Hey, it's a French student here, and today we have a UML example, which I will be explaining more or less. So I have already created an auto system, and I have used the planned UML, which you can see over here. Let me know if you're more interested in the planned UML stuff. Otherwise, this is the UML class diagram, which exists as some classes where we have a, and this is the auto system, where we have a customer with some attributes and some methods. And we have one customer, but between zero and many orders connect to this customer. For an order, we can have an order detail. One order can have between one, so at least one or many order details. And given our order details, we can have, when it comes to the item, we can have none order details, then we have, don't have anything, or we can have many. But for each order detail, we would have one item. And regarding payment, we have an abstract class, which is just called payment, which is connected to the order. So we can have one order, but between one and many payment methods. And they are extending using an extending arrow to our abstract class. We have the three different ways of payment, which is cash, check, or credit, which all again have their own attributes and methods connected with the, let's have a look at the arrows. Inheritance arrow because they extend our abstract class. Then we had our association arrows, which is just the, the lines or with the arrows, depending on how you feel. Then we had one aggregation arrow between the order and the order detail, which means they are connected, like closely connected, but they can exist separately. War, where if it had been a composition arrow, they would not be able to exist separately, like uh, like the example of if we had like a a human class and a heart class, where they're two different things, but they can't exist separately. You can't have the heart without the human, but you also can't have the human without the heart. But in this case, you can have the order without the order detail. But they are closely connected. So that's pretty much the basics. We have some classes. We have multiplicity explaining how the, the numbers or how the classes are related. We have the relationships through our lines and our arrows. Inside our given classes, we have our attributes and our methods explaining the use of the class. We don't necessarily have all the uses, but this is just like a basic understanding. And the purpose of this UML class diagram is to give like a basic general understanding of the program. It might be easier to use if you have, for example, talking with a customer or with a client or whatever. And it also gives the programmer, the software developer, a better general understanding of what they actually are doing. And sets this, and uh, as we as we always say, a picture says more than a thousand words. So that's the basics for now. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.